We've all experienced it, and it suddenly happens at the worst possible moment. We find out that Excel's formulas aren't calculating correctly. What are we going to do? Well, the good news is that it's normally something simple. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 14 simple reasons why Excel might not be calculating correctly. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in this first scenario, we can see that we have a lookup item and a result. This result is based on an X lookup, and we should just be able to change this to Bravo, for example, and it should look up a new value, but it doesn't. Excel isn't calculating correctly. What's the reason behind this? Well, actually, Excel has two calculation modes, automatic and manual. Automatic is the default mode, but sometimes Excel can change into manual calculation mode. So to find out which mode we're in, we come up to formulas and then calculation options, and you can see that I'm in manual calculation mode. When I change that to automatic, it now calculates correctly. So if I change that to Charlie, it now updates correctly. In example two, we have a similar scenario. We have an X lookup. It should be looking up on the ID number and then returning the value from the value column. Unfortunately, it's returning NA. We have one here and one here. So what's the problem? Why isn't it returning 100? Well, the reason is because these are formatted as numbers and this is formatted as text. Go up to home, you can see that that's got text formatting applied and this has general or number formatting applied. So we need to change this. We can either come into this, change it back to general, double click and press enter. Or if we have the green symbol there, we can click on this warning icon. It says number stored as text. We can convert it to a number and then we'll also make that formula correct. In example three, you can see that we have three items, all with a value of one. When we come to the total at the bottom, it only adds up to two. What could be happening here? Well, the reason is because this item called Bravo has an apostrophe at the start in the value. So this means that Excel is treating this as text rather than as a number. So again, we can convert this to a number and that now calculates correctly. Now, if you don't see these green little icons in the corner, we can turn these on or off. We come up to File, Options, and then in the Formula section, we can come down here to Enable Background Error Checking. If I uncheck that and click OK, you'll see that that flag now disappears. It's quite useful to have them turned on so that Excel can give us any of its automatic background checks. For option four over here in this cell, you can see that we have an X lookup. It's looking up the item and should be returning the value. Instead, it's returning hash NA, so it's not applicable. It can't find the item. This is text and this is text. So why is there an issue? Well, it's because this item actually has trailing spaces. To fix this, we could add trailing spaces into our lookup value. That would return the correct value, though probably not a great solution. Another option is we could use the trim function. So trim those values there. And then we can paste those back over the top. That then calculates the correct value. Now it goes without saying that if we have these types of scenario, then the best option is to use Power Query to clean up our data before we need to use it. In this next example, we have an order column and then also a batch column. And the rule is that the smallest batch that we will issue is a batch of 50. So therefore, someone's ordered 30, which means we've had to increase that number to 50. If you look at the bottom, we can see that these correctly calculate to 330. But this one only calculates to 300. That can't be right. It should be 350. So what's happened here? Well, we've got an if function. Say that if D6 is less than 50, then this should be displayed as 50 within double quotes. So it's treated as text. So to fix this, we need to change our formula. There we go. And that now calculates correctly. In scenario six, we have a VLOOKUP function. So it's looking up the item and returning the value. And it's based on this cell here. And it looks like it's working correctly. Because if it says alpha, it says 100. Let's change it to Bravo. Ah, Bravo should be returning 245, but it's not. It's only showing 100. And this is because we haven't used all of the correct arguments for our VLOOKUP. 
We've excluded that last argument, which means we're telling Excel that our data is sorted. But it's not. It's Alpha, Charlie, Bravo, and then Delta. So this is not a sorted list. So in our VLOOKUP, if we change this last argument to false, it will now calculate the correct value. So the important thing is we need to know all the arguments for the formulas that we are using. In this example, we have the word hello in cell C4, and then in cell C6, we're using the len function to calculate the number of letters inside cell C4. Now len is calculating six. However, hello only has five characters. So what's going on here? Well, what we can't see is that hello has some non-printed characters included. It actually has a line break included in that value. But we've turned off word wrap so therefore, Excel is just showing this as a straightforward value. So if we have non-printed characters, we can use the clean function. We go clean and close that bracket, press return, and that now calculates correctly as five. Now it's worth saying that the clean function doesn't get rid of all non-printed characters. And in those scenarios, we might have to use the substitute function to clean those specific characters. Here in example eight, we have three items, all with a value of one, but yet they appear to have a total of zero. So what could be going on here? Well, actually, if we double click on this cell, you can see that we have a circular reference. Cell C7 contains our calculation, but it's also included in the range which is in that calculation. So therefore it's trying to sum itself. As a result, it's a circular reference, and instead it's just going to return zero. If we come up to formulas and then to error checking, we come to circular references, you can see that that cell is listed as having a circular reference. So all we need to do is come into this sum function, change that to the correct range, and that will then calculate correctly. In example nine, we have this issue here that we have three items, all with a value of one, but yet at the bottom, we're not getting the total. In fact, we're just constantly seeing this sum. What's going on there? Why aren't we seeing a value of three? It's looking up the correct range, so what's the problem? Well, the answer is that we have show formulas applied. So in our formulas ribbon, we can see show formulas. If we uncheck that, it now calculates those numbers correctly. In example 10, we have our three items again, but this time we have quarterly data. We can see that it calculates to 30, 30, 30, and 30, which makes sense for Q1, Q3, and Q4. But Q2 says 30, even though it should add up to 60. So what's the issue here? Well, what's happened is that someone has added the dollar symbols to lock in that cell range, and they've dragged that cell range across. So what's happened when we come to this cell in D8, it's actually just calculating the wrong range. So I press F4 to loop through and remove those dollar symbols. And now when we drag that across, we get the correct values. For example, 11, we have the issue of automatic data entry conversion. So for example, let's say in here, I just want a value of 1 tenth. So one divided by 10, press return. And instead, Excel has decided that it's the 1st of October, 2022. Now, depending on your regional settings, you might get a different date. If I apply this with a general format, you can see it's 44,835 because that's the serial number for the 1st of October, 2022. So I tried to type in 1 tenth, and I ended up typing in 44,835. So we just need to be aware of Excel's automatic data conversion features. In example 12, we have another lookup scenario. Here, you can see that we have a lookup function. It's looking up the ID and should be returning the value. Yet it's returning hash NA. Now here, because these items have leading zeros, we've entered text, so we've got an apostrophe, and then leading zeros, and then a value of one. So why isn't it returning the correct value? Well, it's because over here, this isn't a text item. It looks like a text item because it has leading zeros. Instead, it's actually a custom number format. So the underlying number is one, but the custom number format makes it look like it has leading zeros. So here you can see the number formats. I'll go to more number formats and it's applied this number format here that has leading zeros included. So we've got two options, 
We change this to a one, so that now calculates correctly. And if we want to, we can apply the same custom number format to that cell as well. So that now looks like we're looking up 0001, and that is the corresponding item from the ID column. So in this scenario, we have three items, all with a value of one. But yet the total is adding up to four. What's going on there? Well, it's actually because we have this hidden row. So when we unhide that, you can see that it's summing all four values. Therefore, it's not a good idea to use hidden rows and columns because it can affect our calculations or the appearance of our calculations. However, if we do want to use them, it's a good idea to use the subtotal function or the aggregate function. So if we want to use subtotal, so subtotal, open brackets, so it's 109 is the sum. And I can close that, that now shows four. If I hide that same row, you can see that that formula now calculates to show three. And in our final example, we have another lookup scenario. You can see that we have an X lookup. It's looking up the value 1.8, and then it should be returning the value from column C. So it should be returning the value India. Instead, we're getting a hash NA error. So what's going on here? Well, it's because of the binary to decimal conversion. I've got another video about this that details the issue. And this is because not all numbers can be converted from binary to decimal. And 0.1 is one of those numbers. So actually we start off here at one, then we add 0.1 and we go down each of those numbers. So we actually build up an exceptionally small rounding difference, which when we use X lookup, it's looking up exactly 1.8. So therefore this number isn't exactly 1.8, but this number is. So in this scenario, all I'm gonna do is hard code these numbers so that it'll then look up the correct value. The other option is to use a round function. So I could add round on here. So I could round that to one decimal place. And then when we copy that down, it will then calculate the correct value. Well, that's it for this video. That's 14 reasons why Excel might not calculate as we expect. Do you know of any other simple methods that often catch people out? If you do, please leave a comment below because we'd love to keep a full collection of all the things that might cause issues. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.